Okay, cool. So I'm just, uh, before I start, I'll just uh, uh, want to say a few words about Una and who we are. Um, we are, Una is a software company and uh, we develop uh, solutions, software solutions for audiovisual localization industry. Um, namely, we have products, uh, two main products. One is called Una Manager uh, and the other one is called uh, Una Online Subtitle Toolkit, which you see here. So basically, those are uh, production tools for subtitles and captions. Uh, and the other one, Una Manager, as I said, is the uh, software platform for managing the whole localization process. So this is a software for companies to manage all their audiovisual localization uh, tasks, workflows from A to Z. And uh, uh, both tools, uh, both our software products can be integrated. And actually, it's called Una Integrated. So you have one stop shop, you have a single platform uh, for audiovisual localization industry. And uh, we have a lot of uh, happy customers. We, I guess, most of the uh, uh, Hollywood companies who deal with localization, like except for the majors, uh, who have their own software platforms, proprietary things. Um, most of their Hollywood companies and uh, a lot of companies in Europe and uh, uh, recently in Asia are onboarding our tools. Uh, and that's what I want to just, you know, share uh, with you if uh, you haven't had a chance so far to see our tools. Uh, we, the tools, it's captioning and subtitles tools were built from ground up uh, as a platform for integration into workflow management systems. So uh, when I'm showing you, for example, and you can see here a lot of different squares, uh, those are different apps. And each app is sort of a mode for a different task in uh, captioning, in subtitling, or scripting. Um, and so think of it as a single software. It's just with different modes. And each mode is a different use, use case, different scenario, which can, be, uh, uh, which can be triggered through the management software. Now, uh, if you look at this one, so first of all, if you take, for example, this app, which is called Create Pro, and uh, these apps, they can be uh, also purchased in our shop as a standalone applications. So if you are a subtitler, translator, you can take this one or this one, uh, depending on what you're doing, uh, and that's a you know standalone software. But it also can be a part of a bigger system, and that's what uh, differ differentiates us from the others. Okay, it's not just a standalone software. It's basically, it's a whole web platform, which is meant for the integration with other systems. But if you take it, if you look at it as a standalone system, you can take this app, for example, and that's a regular subtitling app. It's web-based. Like if you take, for example, our apps for subtitling preparation, for creating, uh, you know, uh, master subtitles templates or translating from those templates or creating scripts. It's all web-based. Uh, it's, uh, it's accessible from, uh, 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 from pretty much anywhere. You just need to have a browser and an internet. And uh, it's, uh, because it's a browser, uh, it's uh, accessible through, uh, uh, on Macs and PCs. And if I, for example, open one of those, you can see that it lists a, uh, 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 your recent projects. So they're all backed up, they're all saved. They can all be accessed from uh, any location. If I opened one of those, so you can see the video. Uh, the video can be either local, it can be uh, also a stream. You can load pretty much uh, uh, any URL here. Uh, here you can see the, the subtitles. The subtitles, of course, are synced. Uh, to the video, you can see the timeline at the bottom uh, with audio waveform and short change markers. But pretty much anything you would uh, need from a professional grade uh, subtitle preparation tool. And of course, it's a rich text editor, so you can do pretty much anything. 
uh, with the text. So you can do uh, italics, you can do colors, and you can do switch positioning, like pretty much everything. And and, and it, of course, it it validates your project uh, on the fly. So you can see here it says two errors, basically according to the client specification, uh, it checks your project, uh, uh, whether it has errors or not. So for example, this one, you can see that it has duration is less than one second. That's just because I set it to be that way. Or this one, which says number of lines should not exceed two. Okay, because the subtitle, this one has three liners. So it's all uh, very flexible. And in the end, of course, once you finish with the preparation, uh, you can export your uh, subtitle project into a variety of formats. And we have pretty much any format on the market. So it's uh, both plain text ones, uh, SRTs, VTTs, and also the uh, the new TTML, TTML based uh, uh, DFXPs, ITTs, Netflix time text, etc. So that's that's the the, the software prep uh, tool for for the subtitles. And of course, when I was talking about the different use cases, different modes, if you can look in the translation, for example, this one, if I open the translate mode, this will take a subtitle file and split it, split my edit into two parts. One is for my source language and the other one is for my target language. So for example, if I need to translate it to a different language, I can just start translating it. And you can see here, once I import my time template on my left-hand side, I can start typing and I can see right away what I'm typing on the screen. And of course, it will also uh, keep all the timing and positioning uh, from the master template. Okay, so that's actually the tool which is widely used for, uh, for example, for, for, for subtitling agencies who do uh, need to, you know, deliver multi languages uh, or deliver a, a bunch of like dozens of languages at scale uh, for uh, multiple episodes. So they have basically create one single uh, time template in the source language and then translate it into uh, all the uh, second languages. And uh, so that's the translate, for example, that's one of the uh, mostly used apps, uh, especially in the uh, large scale localization business. And also one of our, you know, uh, apps which are used for QC and for uh, review. Uh, and that's uh, that's what we started for. That's what we uh, started our business with. Uh, and, the, and that's a rule. And the review tool is a very powerful tool. It looks like uh, the create app. Uh, however, it, uh, it has a couple of things which are not uh, seen you now at first sight. First of all, when you create a project, if you created your subtitles and if you want to share your project with another person for a review, uh, you can just go to review, share subtitle link, uh, just put an email of the person and share the project with him. And that person is, does, doesn't have to be a, a user, an active user in the system. Uh, so he just gets that project, exact same project. So instead of you know burning subtitles, uh, on the video to send it to your customer for approval, you can just send him a link. And that customer can just, just go and, uh, you know, if he wants uh, to add something, he can add something. And if he wants to delete something, he can just delete something. And maybe he want to change some time codes. So we can move and change some time codes. And uh, the big thing is once uh, that person is finished, you can just press a button, review and complete it, and that project goes back to you. And you can see it says three changes. So this app just you know tracks changes and you can just click a button and you can see all the changes in a single summary window. You can see in green add, you can see in green something was added. In red, you can see something was deleted. And here you can see time codes were modified. Uh, and that is a, a, 
a big thing when you need to you know to share and approve or um, or send a project for external reviews. Now, uh, one of uh, the additional things that we feature with that tool is um, is the ability to not just track changes and not just make edits, uh, but also to uh, categorize them with error codes. So not only can you change this thing, uh, you can also click on this question mark and you can categorize why did you make that change. So let's say this one, you can mark it as misspelling, and this one, you can mark it as punctuation error. And this one, let's say it's a timing error. So what this gives you, uh, if you think of, uh, you don't have to do this, of course, but uh, if you think of you know, a large organization which needs not just you know, to QC things and, and then send to uh, customers, uh, you, just, you want your linguists, you want your resources to constantly get better. So that gives you the option to uh, provide a very transparent feedback of what has been done, what has been done uh, over your project. If you just go to review and export a summary to Word or in Excel, so let's, I'll export all, all the subtitles. So you can see here, you can download an Excel sheet. And here you can see an original column and then a QC or suggested revision, and then an error code. So original, that's clear. Now, whenever you have a QC or suggested revision, you can see here before and after, and that's what was what's the error code. Another one, punctuation error. Another one, you can see no text was modified, but it's categorized as timing error, and you can see the timings were modified. And if you scroll back, scroll down to the bottom, you can see uh, the total error count. So you can see that you had 102 subtitles. Out of them, you had one, one punctuation error, one timing error. So that gives you a very uh, good, uh, you know, statistics tool. Uh, and you know, it, it, if you look at uh, uh, an organization perspective, uh, that gives you an overall good metrics. Uh, uh, tools for for your linguists. Now we have you know a, a bunch of more tools, uh, you know smaller tools, uh, apps for for example, for scripting, for creating dialogue lists and dubbing scripts, which are basically you can see they they might look the same. I mean it's the same core application. This one for example. You can see this is not subtitles. It looks like a, you know, a subtitling tool, but this is uh, split into uh, queues, into replicas rather than uh, uh, subtitles. So that's, that box can allow you for more text and it also gives you, uh, you know, tools for uh, fields, additional fields for adding metadata, such as speaker IDs. So you can pick who was your speaker ID and you can add another speaker ID and you can add more columns uh, to that output, and, and then at the end of the day, you can export this one, this deliverable, uh, uh, such as ABDL, like a broadcast uh, list, which will look like that. And if you are familiar with the, uh, you know, post-production scripts and dialogue lists. This will typically look something like that. So you have your, your queues, and then you have your speaker IDs, and then you have your time codes, and you can, of course, modify this a little bit. Now, uh, all of those are, you know, um, are standalone tools, and all of those can be uh, purchased as, as separate apps from our shop. Now, what I want to show you is how they uh, can be integrated with the management system and that's uh, what because uh, probably you, you've seen a lot of subtitling tools and they are you know fairly they uh, uh, they look the same 
more or less. Uh, however, uh, management systems, they are, there's not a lot of them. And I can show you how this uh, works behind the scenes. For example, this is, an, this is a sample of our management application. Uh, it's called Una Manager. And here you can see, for example, a bunch of uh, orders. And uh, they're just, you know, titled like order one, order two. And an order is basically is what you get from your customer. Uh, so you get a video or a document or things like that. So let's say uh, you have a title which is called Magnific Magnificent 7. And I have uh, source language English and I have a bunch of target languages. And if I look, if I drill down into the order tasks, Now you can see how uh, inside the management system, how a single order uh, can be split into multiple tasks, uh, which is uh, not, not necessarily linear. And I'll show you an example. So for example, you have different steps in the workflow. So this one is called pre-production. And you can see that typically consists of receiving the assets from the customer, such as media file, and template, and you can see those have been completed. And then you have your language tasks. So first of all, you have the English, that's my source language, and I have the English master template, uh, which is called English master template conform, that's my tasks. Now, you can also see that this one was completed, but here you can also see how uh, all our apps are integrated into the management system. So basically, you can see the Create Pro is uh, the first app that I showed you. That's a, a regular subtitling prep. And that's an icon that opens uh, specifically this task. Uh, if I click on that one, you can see by the way that it has been completed, but it will open up in a separate tab. And I can also view, so you can see it opens with the video, with the subtitles, and you can also see that it's in read-only mode. That's because that task has already been completed. But you can scroll down, you can see the video, you can play the video with the subtitles, and that's basically how resources get access to our platform, uh, to our tools. Uh, to web-based production tools. So this one is actually less interested, less interesting. Uh, that's an English template. But if I look at the language tasks, so for example, here I have Russian subtitling from template. That's the name of my product. And then I have translation and QC. And here you can see how uh, translation task is connected to Translate Pro app. And you can see that the resource that has been assigned to that is Maya. And I can look also at the task progress, which says 2%. Uh, you can see that Maya has translated one out of 44 uh, subtitles. So that's not a lot. But as a project manager, I can click on that one and see how Maya is progressing. So if I click on that one, I will see the exact view Maya is having while translating this video. So you can see this is English to Russian, 2997 drop frame. You can see all that here. And you can see that, yeah, only one subtitle out of 44 was translated. Now let's say uh, I'm now Maya and I'm translating that document, I'm translating that video. Uh, and let's say I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a lazy translator. I'm not doing this by hand. I'm going to translate and I'm actually gonna use the machine translation. So I'm gonna do translate all. And as you see, we have integrations with third-party engines like One Translator, AppTech, Amazon Translate. So let me push Amazon Translate. 
And I'm a lazy person. I've just, you know, translated it. And I'm a happy person now. And I can just go and click on finish. So when I do this, this it will close my task. And it will technically uh, trigger the next task in the production chain. Now, if I close this, now, once this one is completed, you can see now it says 44 out of 44 subtitles translated. Now, I have no idea whether those were, you know, human translation or machine translation. Uh, however, you can see the next task in the production is QC. And I, I, I see a person called Wayne is assigned to that one. And for this task, he's assigned with the review tool. You can see there's a name of the tool, and there's a button which opens that tool. Now that basically means that it, when I click on that button, it will open a review tool for the QCR. So the QCR will just have, you can see here, the QCR will have source and target like before and after side by side. So this one is the actual translator, and I cannot edit it. I can also hide it. But if I'm a QCR, I can start editing that translation, and I can start deleting and switching and uh, switching time codes and all that stuff. And that all tracks changes. So when I'm adding any of those changes, I can also add the error codes, like I showed you. And that will sort of finalize the, the process. Uh, at the end of the day, you can go and export your final deliverable to the customer, be it uh, you know, SRT, DFXP, or any other uh, subtitle deliverable. So that's, that's more or less the, the, the process. And you can also see that when I had the English as my source language, I had Russian and I also had French. So once the English time template has been completed, it also activates uh, the French translation. So the Russian translator and the French translator, they can work, of course, independently. Okay, that's not a linear flow. Uh, once this one, the, the master template task has been completed, this activates all the uh, all the child tasks. All right. Now that's how it actually works. And uh, by the way, in terms of exporting, you can have those uh, automatically delivered into the system. You can also create an automatic batch export uh, configurations. So basically, if you go and configure, if you go to the customers, You can configure automated uh, batch exports. For an example, you can go into customer delivery specifications, and you can configure both batch export and file naming. So you can actually create a multiple exports, one of the single tasks, and you can also create a naming convention for all of those deliverables. So the, the idea of uh, those uh, batch expert configurations is, for example, if you have uh, a bunch of uh, episodes, so you have a, a big series which you need to deliver in a, in a specific format, you can just you know, create a batch expert configuration, you can create a file naming template, and you can, with a few clicks, you can create hundreds of different files and deliver them to your client. Uh, questions so far? Uh, thank you very much. It's, it was interesting to see at your uh, cloud service, which can be used both by translators who get orders and by business managers who give those orders. Uh, uh, yes, I can hear you. 
have uh, different tariff plans uh, if I need to use it um, for a personal use, not professional. If I need to translate only one to five videos per month, for example. Yeah. So uh, all our tools, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, they are available as a standalone application. So you can go to uh, shop.una.net and you can uh, subscribe, uh, you can get a subscription of uh, uh, starting from one week uh, for pretty much any of those apps. So that's uh, either, so you can just put your PayPal or credit card, you can pay and have a one week or one month or six months, depending on what you need. Thank you. And that's pretty cost effective as well. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question is about uh, file formats. Uh, you mentioned that it's possible to configure um, the color of the text and uh, the, 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 the place where the text is in the subtitle. Uh, and also you mentioned that it's possible to save in various formats and like SRT format. Uh, as far as I know, it's not possible to change text color and text uh, and place of the text in SRT. So how, how would, it, would it look like, like in the final SRT file, for example, if I change something uh, in, the, in the editor and uh, how it would be processed? So would the uh, SRT format like uh, would not have these edits or uh, they would be somehow implemented? Thank you. That's actually a good question. And uh, because the SRT is, uh, I guess, the most uh, widespread format over the internet, uh, you, can, you, you need to make sure that you know what you're doing when you export an SRT file. And you're right, SRT are not exactly the, uh, it's, it's not very well defined for, you know, for things like uh, a micro positioning in color. Uh, so when you export it from our software, yeah, you can have all those uh, text styling attributes to the text. However, uh, you need always to keep in mind uh, the, the target player. So if you take Facebook, for an example, Facebook, ingest only on formatted SRTs. And even if you have players which do uh, support SRT, they not necessarily support all the attributes in that SRT. Uh, so they may very well just discard all the positioning and color information. So you need to, you always need to keep in mind the, the, the target player, uh, the target platform that you are uh, uploading your file and SRT is not the best choice. If you're, you know, if you, for example, going uh, to upload your subtitles to YouTube, you have uh, the VTT, you have the uh, SCC or any other format which is very well supported and very well defined as a standard. Uh, so you, you're better off with them. Thank you. And what about use of uh, MT, TM, and glossaries, uh, uh, internal or even external? So uh, regarding the machine translation, I already showed you the option uh, with uh, created several uh, machine translation engines, uh, such as uh, AppTech, Y Translator, Amazon, and we are, so basically we have an open API and we are uh, ready to integrate pretty much any uh, machine translation engine. Uh, in terms of, uh, Translation memory, we've uh, been in the, in the talks and we also have um, a ready prototype of integrating translation memory from a memo queue. Uh, we've also just progressing with integrating uh, KNP tools and uh, glossaries uh, through our management tools. And uh, so if you get to the standalone application, you have, uh, you can create your own uh, sort of glossary. It's called personal dictionary. Uh, so it's it's not, uh, you know, uh, not ready uh, for production yet in terms of, uh, you know, uh, full, uh, uh, full blown glossaries and KNPs, but uh, those will be ready in uh, the very near future. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions?
Well, I guess that's it. Thank you very much, Alex, for your presentation and for your sponsorship. It's, it's appreciated much.